Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Harlequin Coho, and tonight I have another wonderful game for you between Stefan H., who is playing today as an Allied Infantry Commander. We have seen him before in earlier replays. He is a favorite of mine. And Spokey, who is playing as a Blitzkrieg uh, Axis Commander. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this replay started here, and we'll take a look. I'm going to swap on back to Stefan, and we'll just uh, see what's going on here. So, I, you know, I'll, I'll try and paint this whole replay for you in big big pictures here just so you can kind of get an idea of where we're going with this but what I really want to emphasize is uh, Stefan's you know trueness to his build order so he is an infantry commander and he goes infantry and he goes infantry hard versus a whole lot of stuff that can occasionally really kill infantry and you get to see a lot of infantry versus pumas and versus tanks and versus all sorts of crap and he just does a fantastic job of using his units and using them well so you'll notice right off the bat very first engineer squad builds a barracks and he goes right into a right into a rifleman squad uh, second uh, second engineer is just going right out here to take care of this uh, munitions depot and you've got a very similar thing going on up here for Spokey the German player who comes out right away with uh, his level 3 accomplished Volksgrenadiers um, you know level 3 it's good he's he's working his way up there um, but not to uh, give you the wrong idea both of these players I looked them up you know uh, Stefan I'm very familiar with he is a top 1% player he's you know right up there I believe when I last I checked he was in the top 5 of infantry commanders and Spokey again is top 1% uh, Blitzkrieg commander so these are these are top 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 ladder players and so they've really had a lot of experience playing these games and they know what's going on so <clears throat> gonna take a quick peek here at the tactical map and just to look around and see where everybody's going, you can see this is kind of the overall chess game, as I like to call it, is just kind of which pieces are you putting where, and how are you capping things, and how are you controlling things. And this will flux throughout the entire game. But for the most part, you can see Stefan is going for the capture points that he knows he needs in terms of uh, controlling the map and getting the ammo and fuel he needs. And his opponent is more or less doing the same, but already you can see Stefan's done a great job just kind of capping everything. But going to go ahead and switch back out here to take a look. And you'll see that while I was just saying his opponent wasn't getting anything quite yet, his opponent went straight uh, deep into his own territory. So Spokey's down here with his accomplished folks right deers grabbing this fuel point and grabbing this normal manpower point right here. So, um, we have our second rifleman squad out. Now, it's worth noting that um, Stefan just went straight into rifleman, rifleman, which, uh, when you get right down to it, is technically a little bit faster. I like starting off with uh, gladiator rifleman. I just always get gladiator rifleman because they're fantastic. But uh, Stefan, on the other hand, just kind of knows he just wants to get a lot of units out quickly, and so he just goes for regular rifleman, which is really nice because by the time that he researches uh, the Browning automatic rifle upgrade as fast as he possibly can, uh, he has at least two riflemen out already. And here we go. You can see the riflemen versus the early pioneers is just brutal. Now, a lot of players like this rifleman feel just because uh, anyone who has noticed this before hates the fact that... Uh, Two pioneers in equal combat tend to defeat two engineers. And now here you can see here's three engineers versus uh, all these accomplished Volksrandeers. Engineers retreat right away. He doesn't even take a single loss. Great choice. Meanwhile, we've got riflemen versus pioneers, and, and they just do so much better than having to mess around with a bunch of engineers. So now here you get a, a great example of sort of the uh, how these gunfights don't always work out arithmetically. So it's six on five at the beginning here. And you'll notice very quickly it's six on four. And you kind of think, oh, a six on four battle. I bet, you know, two guys live on one side is the kind of naive approach to thinking about this. But as I said before, they work out non-arithmetically. And six on four is very frequently six on zero by the end of it. Just because you have, you know, every round that you fire, it's six guys firing versus your three guys firing. Six guys versus your two guys. And the number of kill shots tend to uh, go exponentially out of control. So um, that is the early advantage of all allied players is that they have these riflemen. Ooh, and it looks like he took one shot shot to the head just kind of randomly this uh, engineer just died <clears throat> but riflemen tend to make up for some of the early drawbacks ie pioneers feel a little bit more powerful uh, and things like that so riflemen I really love it I think it's a great way to go for all builds <clears throat> meanwhile we've got a wonderful position sniper and I want to keep an uh, eye on this sniper all game because um, Spokey, which I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but I'm just going to call him that, because why not? Uh, Spokey does a great job of not overextending with this sniper, but still putting pressure all over the map. Again, uh, you'll see this kind of game of footsie is just going to kind of go on all game. Um, <clears throat> nothing too surprising about that. Pretty much whenever a player overextends and caps something beyond their reach, it just kind of forces the other player, like Spokey is doing now, to recap that point. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Stefan, uh, being very aggressive this game, um, 
about keeping control of this area. Now you just saw that this single engineer just got sniped already. Uh, this sniper's got three kills. Uh, I don't think he saw it. He's really got to retreat, and he does not. You can see he just took his helmet off right there, and uh, this sniper is already paying for himself by keeping track of things. Meanwhile, this is a brutal force to deal with here. Stefan is marching around the map right now with a gladiator rifleman backed up by three full health flame engineers with a flamethrower. Now flamethrower does bonus damage against infantry and uh, reverse to what their cover is. So it does extra damage to heavy cover, less damage to light cover. Also does a lot of damage versus building. So flame engineers really good. And uh, here we see this is the ultimate combo. Flame engineers and gladiator rifleman versus targets that are under heavy cover. This is going to be a terrific job. And you'll notice that right away, uh, Spokey knows the problem here, and, and it looks like he's focusing down these engineers because they're taking all the casualties right now. Uh, this sniper is certainly uh, pitching in, but the flame engineers run away having done their damage, and it looks like gladiator riflemen are going to continue to kill off the rest of these Volks Rangers. However, this sniper is nicely positioned. You know, this nice central spot right here gives him good sight over all, you know, all corners of the map. The riflemen run in. I, I kind of would like to see Gladiator Rifleman can charge up and, and sprint in, but just look at how he's backing away the sniper. He takes one last parting shot, and he knows that he's got enough. Now, this is a good use of a grenade right here. Boom! You can see that. Uh, I just love how this uh, the physics affects this debris here. I don't know how well you saw that, but uh, these Gladiator Rifleman got to get out of here right now. There's a sniper there. He's retreating, and Boom! Right in the back. Unfortunately, that's that's a huge loss right there. Um, having to buy that really expensive Gladiator Rifleman unit one more time. Uh, anyhow, we will see a massive 12 kills for this sniper. Very, very effective sniper usage here. And uh, suddenly here comes our first camouflage. Now, I haven't really had a chance to go over the commander abilities yet, but for anyone who's new, infantry commanders, as you would suspect, <laughs> rightfully so, uh, focus mainly on infantry. Uh, he has this camouflage ability, which can camouflage a unit, and uh, as you level it, they gain bonuses to attack as soon as they leave uh, camouflage. Forward barracks, which uh, can turn any building into a forward barracks just right off the bat. It does things like heal. Uh, we see another little skirmish going on here. Again, wonderful sniper position. Just... Uh, picking off these units here. Uh, Rangers, which basically have anti-vehicle and anti-infantry guns. Very versatile unit. Infantry attrition, which we will get to in a little bit. And artillery strike, which does what you pretty much imagine. Huge artillery attrition. Uh, once again, Spokey is being very defensive, but really, really well uh, positioned about it. So you can see this heavy machine gun team way in the back. Sniper way in the back. This is a very difficult position to attack uh, with infantry. You just... The... the the sniper kills just start racking up too much and getting pinned by the machine gun makes it really impossible to attack him. This is good to note for any Axis players who are just kind of having trouble kind of holding points and things like that. This is just a fantastic combination of units and you should always keep an eye out for that. So, <clears throat> gonna kind of look around the map here. You'll see being very clever here with his camouflage units, uh, running around, capping points, that sort of thing. They can cap while invisible. Uh, it's just a, a great skill and I like seeing him use it throughout the entire game. <coughs> Uh, Volks Grenadiers in the center are capping everything. And while we're kind of at a low point here, let me go ahead and swap over to Spokey and give an overview of his abilities as well. He's got flares, which you can drop in an area, and basically it reduces the defense and it reveals camouflaged units, that sort of thing. Very effective, incidentally, against infantry. Uh, he can call in stormtroopers, which, much like rangers, have uh, good anti-infantry and anti-vehicle abilities. Uh, rocket barrage, which is you know similar to other kind of artillery abilities with you know its own unique things. Manpower blitz, which allows you to get a very quick burst of manpower which is this top number here used to buy uh, units and things like that. And then it reduces your income for the rest of the duration. And heavy armor support, 1,600 manpower, but it calls in basically a small fleet of tanks and things like that. So uh, we'll get a good chance to see all of those abilities later. I'm going to go ahead and tab on back here. And uh, as you can see, things have calmed down just a little bit. We've got a big... Uh, maybe a little bit of a surprise attack coming here from Stefan. Now let's take a look at his build orders here and you'll see that um, he pretty much just went straight for a supply yard after he got the Browning Automatic Rifle upgrade. You can see he's doing all of this with just regular riflemen with upgrades. And uh, he got a supply depot and then went straight into a motor pool. He did not go for tanks or anything like that. Oh and here we go! He pops out just in time to get a uh, a jump on this uh, sniper and you can see you'll see when these guys pop over here they get increased attack rate and I believe that's increased movement speed but this really far back positioned heavy machine gun is just enough to keep these guys pinned you can see they're very wounded at the moment and now everybody's pinned and they're just gonna have to get out there it was a nice little surprise though and he jumped in there and, and did a lot of damage to the sniper who uh, unfortunately can uh, self-heal eventually you can see his health looks like it's beginning to go up pretty rapidly uh, 20 kills for this sniper 
Uh, meanwhile, a little skirmish here, and unlike this time before, now this is, again, the accomplished Volksgrenadiers versus regular riflemen. This time, the accomplished Volksgrenadiers got the first shot, and uh, it was actually uh, five wounded riflemen versus five accomplished Volksgrenadiers, and the, that arithmetic difference just kind of stacked up in their favor this time, and the riflemen had to retreat. Uh, Flame Engineers moving up here on the left. And here is our first stug going out here. So I, I failed to comment on this before, but the Sturm Armory went up for our Axis player here, and a hero accomplished stug came out. And now we're going to start seeing, well, what are our options? Uh, meanwhile, it's it's really important to note how aggressive uh, Stefan is being right now, and I really like that. I mean, a lot of people would say this looks terrible. Why are you up here? I mean, he, he actually managed to kill this sniper, by the way. Very important to notice that, but... He's being shot at by a tank. He's got machine guns firing at him. He's getting sniped, and he's getting killed. What's going on here? Oh, it's infantry attrition! Infantry attrition. It will replace any units, uh, any full squads that are lost with a replacement full squad. So he can just come right up here and do as much damage as he can, because guess what? He gets a full squad back here uh, as payment for having lost a squad. So it's it's kind of an uh, excuse to go ahead and suicide mission with your infantry. It's 50 munitions, and he no doubt has it fully leveled up. It is a very, very powerful ability, and to anyone new to infantry or to new to fighting infantry or looking for it, this is a ability that you cannot uh, underestimate at all. It is one of the most powerful infantry abilities, and it gives them a lot of flexibility on the field. Um, for 50 munitions, he basically went in there, he kept the enemy pinned down with his own troops, he kept him fighting his troops, and uh, he got back a fully healthy unit as a result of it. So, and it lasts forever, by the way. So, uh, again, we're going to take a look around here. We've got some more upgrades going on. Uh, I missed which one that was, but it was either grenades or sticky bombs. I believe it was sticky bombs. That's Most people get sticky bombs before grenades anyways. Oh, and this puma is coming out here, and these poor engineers don't know which way to run. Uh, this puma does terrific damage. Uh, it's got a multiple shot burst out of its main cannon, which is very effective against infantry. Uh, you can tell here based on this uh, little number right here on the right, that's the effect against infantry. It's got three infantry kills. It has five versus the infantry. Uh, to give you an idea, I believe that's kind of a random number. Uh, not random, but it's an arbitrary number between uh, 1 and 10. So it's pretty good. Sticky bombing the heck out of this accomplished stug. You can see damaged engine. And now here's a great, great tip here. So we've got our first uh, Greyhound armored car coming out for Stefan. And it's interesting to note that he went for the Greyhound, even though he already saw tanks out. He didn't go for the anti-tank guns. So you'll you'll see that the turning radius of this of the stug is kind of is kind of bad, but if you get in really close, it just cannot turn as quickly. And so this Greyhound can just constantly flank and get rear armor shots off on him. And boom, out of control he goes. Greyhound's going to have to get out of the way so he doesn't get run over. Uh, the slow motion out of control like that can sometimes be a little bit bad because uh, they can get a couple of shots off before they die. But uh, just very elegant use. He didn't take any damage there. That was, you know... Uh, some sticky bombs from some infantry, and a Greyhound. And that was all it took to completely kill that hero stug. Very elegant solution there. A lot of people uh, could, you know, lose a lot of units to that, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a Puma armored car here with the upgraded barrel that does a little bit of extra vehicle damage. You can tell it normally does three, it does three plus three now. It normally does one against tanks, it does one plus three now. Two, it does less against buildings now, I suppose. <coughs> oh, sorry, two plus one. Just <laughs> three. Uh, basic math. Anyhow. So our accomplished Volksgrenadiers, once again, are just kind of marching through the backfields here. And uh, now they are really getting picked off by this Greyhound armored car. It's worth noting, if, if you take a quick look at this vehicle, if I can get in there, uh, he, right off the bat, upgraded his... Uh, he upgraded the armor plating on the sides of it, the armored skirts, and the 50 caliber gunner. So very effective against infantry, once again. One plus three against infantry now. Very effective. Uh, middle of the map here, really just kind of playing footsie. Uh, you can see some cloaked units just popped out here, and looks like they killed off some Volks Grenadiers now to cap this center position once again. And the hero Stug is back, not to be deterred by his last sticky bombing uh, endeavor. Uh, we got a little bit of uh, Puma versus Armored Car here, and surprisingly, the Armored Car is the only one taking a beating so far. I'm just going to keep jumping around here to keep an eye on what's going on here. The Stug is now taking up a central position. Again, shots going back and forth. Still not a lot of damage done to this Greyhound. It's doing some... Oh, and there is a little mini crit there. Whenever you get a hit against a, a vehicle, you get a chance to roll against a crit table. And one of the crits is things like destroys engine and uh, kills gunner is one of the results that you can get off that. Boom! And we have a small little uh, ranger flank.